Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame and Cinnamon Sugar. Y'all over here like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me look and make sure ain't nobody pulling out at the same time as I'm trying to do this. But uh, anyway, I'm leaving work. Thank God I don't have to work over today. Um, Guess what I just found out <laughs> as I just looked over and saw the side half of his truck. So... I don't remember if I told y'all yesterday about a situation where somebody that works on the shift that comes in after us, she was talking to me and she said, she said that, you know, um, she's going to have to tell or explain why these occurrences should not stand that she got, right? Because when she first showed them to me and she was just telling me the times and all that stuff, I was like, um, you fired, ain't you? Like, what are we talking about? At this point, you fired, apparently. Y'all, excuse me. I, I don't know what was going on. This thing acting crazy today. But, um, it's raining as well, y'all, so keep that in mind. I'm trying to be safe and do this at the same time. So, she was like, yeah, apparently I am. So then she saw me today. I'm kind of going, I'm working my way backwards because I feel like I'm going to forget this because it has nothing to do with my shift. But so she was like, well, I talked to the person that I needed to talk to about all of these occurrences. And she said that I needed to write down on a specific piece of paper um, why these should not stand. Because she said that like in most cases, she was just going straight to the meeting because I already told y'all they started implementing it where if you don't attend the meetings or you're late to the meetings, then you are going to get a half an occurrence for each time that you don't make it or you're late. Now, <clears throat> when I'm in my department, my supervisor hadn't been keeping tabs on that, which I'm thankful for. But most of the time I am there, but I don't trust them. I don't know. Somebody might have been keeping tally. I know that there is like a weekend supervisor. Y'all, I... I'm, I'm very paranoid when it comes to vehicles because of certain experiences that I've had with my old vehicle. Well, my last two. I, I pay very close attention to stuff because of my daddy being a mechanic. Um, I think that what I'm feeling is this truck that has two engines in front of me. And that's what's going on. Two exhaust pipes and things. Cause I'm like, why is this feeling like this? I, I think it's because I'm so close to this truck. Because I know I keep up with everything. So I'm like, what is this? Okay, y'all, my bad. I had to get that out because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna completely forget what I was gonna say to focus on what was going on with this cop, possibly. So anyway, y'all. So the girl was talking to me and she was just like, this don't make no sense because most of this stuff is stuff where I went straight to the meeting and when the meeting was over with, I clocked in. And they trying to make it seem like, oh, well, you're supposed to clock in at this time. And I was like, no. Now, she, now keep in mind, she's been there longer than me. She's younger than me, but she's been there longer than me. So I'm explaining to her, no, you are not to clock in any earlier than six minutes before the meeting starts. But you're not supposed to clock in later than the time your shift is supposed to start so if my shift is from 8 a.m to 5 p.m if you clock in at 801 whether you've called in or not because of the weather or whatever because i know one day i thought i wasn't gonna make it and um that was that night when i left out and it was a sheet of ice on the street and i had no idea because i walked down the steps of where i lived and didn't slip slide didn't see no ice Walked down the sidewalk to my car, got on the street, nothing happened until I got on the interstate. And as soon as I went down the ramp to get onto the interstate, there was a sheet of ice. So yeah, um, I think that particular time I got there, right? Okay, so since y'all ain't gonna go, I'm gonna go. Um, I got there, oh Lord, had to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. Wait a minute. <laughs> See, the other person's being cautious, too. We both looking like, wait a minute. See, I ain't crazy. I ain't trying to get hit. A lot of people have been losing their lives lately to um, these car wrecks, and I ain't got time for it. Um, So, yeah, y'all. It's just been crazy situations, and I'm just like, look, I ain't got time for it. 
I think that was the only time that I was late for work or I was about to be late. I think I clocked in right on time that day. Because I've never, I've never been, it's crazy, I've never been late to this job. Never. Because of weather, none of the other stuff. Like, I've never been late. So, I pride myself on being early, but since I've had to deal with stupidity, I would rather get there when it's almost time for me to show my face than to get there early and then, I don't know, I, I just can't do it. I would rather just not even do it. So, but just to make sure she doesn't get the occurrences that they are now saying that she has, she's been going straight in to go to the meetings and then clocking in. And I had to explain to her, no, you can't clock in no more than six minutes before the meeting, which is 10 till. The meeting starts at 10 till the top of your shift. She was clocking in two to four minutes later, which still gives her enough time to clock in before her shift starts. So I'm like, no, nah, somebody lying because you're not supposed to get an occurrence or half an occurrence unless you are late. Unless you clock in late. So, yeah, somebody lying. Anyway, um, and then she was like, and then they gave me an occurrence for a sick day I put in. You're not even supposed to get an occurrence for that. I was like, no, you're not supposed to get an occurrence. But I was told when I actually used my sick days this year because... They had so much stuff going on where they had to turn the power and the water off. I was like, I need my checks. I ain't got time for this. So I was like, oh, well, that's, you know, money I can still get. Let me put in a week for that and get my money. I was told, well, if you're going to do that, make sure that anytime you do your sick days that you put in a specific spot on the paperwork, occurrence free. And I had to tell her that. And so she was like, it's just supposed to be occurrence free. Wow. I didn't know I had to do all that. I'm like, yeah. I learned a whole lot of stuff. And it's sad that I've been having to tell people who've been here for forever the stuff that's been going on. Because I'm just like, I'm so paranoid. I ain't got time. Like, I ain't, I ain't trying to mess my little check up. I need my little check. So, yeah, y'all. She's in her feelings because they over here trying her. And I'm like, girl, ignore them folks. She was like, apparently they don't want nobody to, you know, stay on and, and continue working. Because she said when she went in the office for the woman to check the days so that she can see that it's logged in the system as these are these days and these are the reasons that we have logged into the system that you were late or whatever the situation was. She saw the married man's name said that he had 11 occurrences. And I was like, wait a minute, who? She was like, him. I was like, now, he's somebody who they need. I haven't seen him lately, but um, unless they fired him, he has, you know, only like taken a day or something off. But I didn't see his name in the other areas that they have designated on the schedule where they would print out that the person called out or they were just out in general because like for one of my coworkers, he'd been out for a couple of days, but the reason was because he had a death in the family. He had a death in the family. His cousin or his nephew was killed in a car wreck in New York. And they had to, you know, of course, travel there because we are obviously in Virginia and it was just a lot going on. So he hadn't been there for like a week, just got back and he has been signing up he just started asking me, well, do they have any overtime? I was like, I'm not sure. And so I saw where they needed somebody on Friday, which is typically his off day for right now. And so he's going to sign up for the whole shift because they needed somebody to stay over and somebody to come in early to cover it because it's kind of hard trying to make sure you can find somebody that's going to cover the shift. So anyway, y'all. I talked to her about that. She was venting about <laughs> some other people. It, it was it's funny. I've told y'all about her before, y'all. Remember back when I was doing the Married Man Side Heifer Saga and I was telling y'all about the person who was now divorced? She wanted to at least have a sexual relationship with him. She don't know that I know this. So I know the type of women that he like as far as the physicality of it all. You know what I'm saying? How, how they look physically or whatever. And she fits the bill. And so I was like, well, why don't you, you know, 
what you see about that? And I could tell, I could just tell when he was still doing the same job that I'm doing currently, I could tell that he was very into her. Well, somebody that looked like her. And so I was like, well, let me see. Let me see. Let me, you know, suggest her and see what he says. And then that's when he was like, no, I don't know about her. And he ended up going to the shift that she was working on. And he was still like, oh, I don't know about that. Because she's young minded and all this other stuff. He kept saying it. And I'm saying to myself, if this girl was to roll up, because she's like a very kind of aggressive and kind of straightforward person. I'm saying to myself, if she was to roll up, I know good and well you wouldn't turn that down. I know you wouldn't. And so he kept telling me, yes, I would. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm not here for her like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. So then he found out for, for show for certain that she really was into him. And he was just like, mm, you know, she nice to look at or whatever, but I'm, I can't do it. Like her mental is not there. He, he feels like she's too young minded. So I was like, okay. So anyway, I just had to make sure y'all knew what the correlation was to that. So anyway, let me tell y'all about the foolishness that ensued today. So I had to do the most hated task. It wasn't that bad. One of the new people came in today and today wasn't one of his days to be there, but they said he could stay and that they would figure out the schedule and explain it to him. Because when I left out Tuesday, he was like, I still don't know how to read the schedule. And I was like, I know you joking. How do you not know how to read the schedule? If you know what your actual name is, then you know how to read the schedule. Because all it is is the areas that you were taught to look in that apply to you because of the position that you hold. You look in those areas on your shift because all of our schedules are placed at specific spots. So all you have to do is look in those areas and that's where you will be. And if your name isn't there then that means you're off or it should be, you know, indication that you're, you know, not going to get drafted or even, you know, it might just be a draft paper at that time. But since he is a part of the people who have to get in there 90 days first, he ain't going to be, you know, he ain't got to look for that. All he got to look for is his regular days and that's it. So anyway, he really don't know his schedule. <laughs> And he just sat up here and came to work today and wasn't supposed to be here. So it is what it is. And they were just allowing him to be here. Um, we actually had extra people today. And they just let him stay. And I think they did it because there were two new people who came in with him who were running the side heifers department. And I was going to be the one who was going to have to go and do that dreaded task by myself. And so I think they were like, I think they were thinking in the, the, the with the vein of, in the vein of, um, let us let it him go up there and experience that and help at the same time so you know he was watching this is the same person that i told y'all the other day that my supervisor tried to play me in front of him ain't never did this stuff before and you gonna sit up here and be like oh well this is what y'all supposed to do sir i done been here this is gonna be two years and i done done this several times a month for two years and you're gonna try to tell me oh this is what you're supposed to be doing what are you talking about I ain't never never Ain't never done it before. People live for my partner to like do that particular task because they know he going to hurry up and get up there and do it and all that stuff or whatever. I am slower with it, but I am so precise with it that uh, the people who matter love what I do. So anyway, y'all, um, <laughs> most people love it. It's just the people who love to be impatient and want to hurry up. And, and I'm like, you want to hurry it? You want to hurry something up, but then when it's wrong, then you look crazy. I ain't got time. I don't like to do that. I want it to be done right the first time. So anyway, y'all, let me tell y'all about what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all everything so I can go in this store and come back out. I know I said I wasn't going back out today, but it's not raining at the moment. It's sprinkling slightly. And by the time I get off here, hopefully it'll still be sprinkling and barely doing anything. And then when I get home, I can beat the rain. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. So anyway, y'all, I did the dreaded task. I did the, you know, the the uh, most hated task. And then um, I was the breaker. So I hate being a breaker. It is what it is. So anyway, the day progressed. And so now we're 
towards the end of the day. Well, not well. Let me, let me not skip ahead. I was gonna skip ahead and then work my way back again. So I, before I get to that part, I ended up at the beginning of the day. I saw old boy who I'm friends with on the PlayStation Network, right? And so he really did have an emergency. He has a niece who injured themselves. Um, they went outside in the middle of the night and um, they hurt themselves. He showed me a picture of it and everything. And so he was called and, you know, yeah, that's what happened with that. So he really did have an emergency. I told him that they need to be, you know, on top of the situation because I think that that child is going to lose two toenails and I've lost a toenail or two before. And so I told him, you know, just make sure that y'all keep an eye on because the way it looked, he's, that child is going to lose the toenails. And so it is what it is. But anyway, he told me that, you know, now they're okay. And he said he's just grateful that for right now he doesn't have kids, even though he does want kids because stuff like that would tear his nerves up, having to rush out all the time. I was like, oh yeah, that's what my daddy did. I said, I told him, I said, my daddy used to set it off with the quickness. If my mama was to call up there to the state of Alabama, <laughs> where he, wherever he was, doing what he was doing for the state of Alabama and call my daddy, oh, it was a wrap. My daddy was gone. Something wrong with my kids, bye. <laughs> my daddy did not peace out. They ain't got time for it. So, yeah, my daddy never played that. My daddy would take off. Um, sometimes when we had certain doctor's appointments and definitely when there were surgeries that had to happen. So yeah, my dad ain't never played that about us. So anyway, um, so that's the way he feels like he's going to be too. So anyway, we were talking and this other person, the side heifer's partner came over there cause she was partnered up with him today. And, um, since she's at the top of the rotation list, she's been put, she has to, Pretty much, unless they're short, short, short staffed in the new department, they're going to put her up there in her department, my department, or the most hated department. So she's, she was in my department today. So she kept seeing me and him talking, and then she came over there like she always do. I always want to roll up, see what we're talking about. And so we were talking about um, him leaving because I told him I respected the fact that he said that you know it's it's a private matter I said okay so in my mind after I really thought about it I said what if it's his parents or something like that like but in most cases I explained to him the reason why I asked him was because most of the people there will say oh I got an emergency or oh, I'm leaving or oh, I'm sick and I, they're not sick it's just they want to get away from working that day or it's whooping they behind. The person they working with is whooping they behind because they got to do their job and the other person's job. So he was like, oh, no, no, no. It ain't nothing like that. It really was an emergency. So that's when he showed me the pictures and stuff of the niece and all of that. So, yeah. So um, we had a good little conversation for like 30, 45 minutes. And then I walked off because I was trying to figure out when I had to do the, hated, the most hated task. So I went and asked somebody. Y'all, I I've mentioned this before, and I don't. It does something to me. <laughs> I know y'all probably gonna read me, especially if any of y'all are like this. If y'all remember Ready to Love, this last season that just aired, what was her name? The heifer who kept wearing the blue contacts. It's a woman at my job who does that, and it's like she already like do this and all that anyway. And I just be like, girl, what is going on? I don't know why she. There are other colors that she could wear that are really cute. I've seen that color and I've seen, I think, purple or something. Now, I ain't gonna lie. Back in the day, I thought purple might have been kind of cute because, I mean, it's it's my, you know, amethyst. So, it's, it's the closest thing to my favorite color, I guess you could say, without actually saying the word, you know, amethyst because it's purple. But, yeah. And it's close. It's kind of close to my favorite color, too. Anyway, y'all. So I had to ask her, well, I ran into her first. I was like, whoever I see first that I'm cool with or I've never really had any issues with, I'm going to ask them when is this situation going to happen so I can go do what I need to do. And so she informed me that we were waiting on certain things in particular. So I just had my radio on scan so I could hear when it happened. So it ended up happening like an hour after I asked her. So I went and did the most hated task. Oh boy 
who was beyond extra, who wasn't even supposed to be there today, he made sure to like mimic everything that I was doing. If I was doing something like heavy handed, like he was, and I had to kind of direct him with one little thing and he took it well. Cause some people, they don't like you to tell them nothing. So I was like, okay, I'm glad that he seems to take direction well, because I don't want nobody to think I'm hovering over them. And at the same time, I don't want them to think that I think I know everything because I don't. So when the person came and did the audit, everything was the way it needed to be. So I'm like, look, exhibit A, <laughs> why my supervisor trying to play me? So y'all, let me tell y'all the foolishness that happened. So I went over to the most hated department. They weren't operational yet. This was going to be one of those days when they might become operational an hour or two before the end of the shift. And that is exactly what happened today. So I knew that the people who were over there, they go to break at 6 and 6.30. So I was like, okay, let me see what it's heading for. So I went over there 15 minutes early and wasn't nothing going on. So I broke out the other person and I was like, hey, just be back at 6.20 because I was breaking about a few minutes early. He was hot and so he was kind of trying to hold on. I was like, well, I'll be back over here at such and such time or whatever but wasn't nothing going on so i came right back so yeah he ended up going to break a few minutes early but well, while i was minding my business doing nothing <laughs> enjoying my day doing nothing the young dude that i told y'all about that i talked to y'all about that has the two young kids he lived with the baby mama and all of that um he gonna roll up because i read him okay so keep in mind he's at work He's also considered to be an extra person today. So he going to sit up there, text me, text me, text me. Now all of a sudden you don't know how to text me back. So I was like, oh, so you acting funny again. So this is what happened. This is the reason why I eventually said, oh, you acting funny again. What led up to it. Let me say that. The person that I've mentioned briefly at one point in time is somebody who's been there for at least four to six months and she is socially awkward and so she was approached by like three people who were like hey um can you trade with old boy that i'm talking about so that he can do this task and you do what he doing now what he was doing was a cake job so i'm like Girl, I know I would have took it. Like, what she had to do required her getting on her knees. I'm not doing it. I'm not getting on nobody's flow. Kiss my entire behind is what you can do for that. Um, <laughs> But I tell y'all, lies and deception. Mm -mm. Like, you have to do the most just to do this task, and it's a very important task. And for him to even be like, man, I ain't finna give up what I got. I ain't finna give up my sweet spot for that. He was willing to do it. Like, he was cool with it. And he can do it very fast. So that was another thing. Y'all tell me why she said exactly what I would have known she was going to say had somebody asked me, you know, do you think she going to react some kind of way? She was like, oh, I mean, I've done this before. I'm going to, um, I'm doing this. So basically she, you know, denied that situation. I tried to switch with her one time when she had some kind of random beef with this one woman. And as much as she doesn't, didn't, let me put it, let me say it like that. She didn't like her at the time. She would rather stay where the schedule says she was supposed to be than to deviate from what the rules say. So in her mind, if I'm supposed to be over here, that's where I'm going to be at. I'm not just going to switch. So a lot of other people, they think that's stupid. And I'm like, I understand. It is, is what it is. And I mean, she already has said in her mind, this is where I'm going to be. When you're somebody as socially awkward as she is, I get it. So anyway... <clears throat> To make a long story short, they made her cry. And um, somebody approached me about it. And I was like, well, um, somebody told me that she started crying. And she was one of the people who approached her. And so she didn't realize that she came at her and it came off harsh to her. And so I was like, I saw her after the fact. And I spoke to her and she spoke, but she kind of was stuck. And so she looked at me. And I don't know if she was longing for me to create 
somewhat of a conversation so that she could have it lead into her expressing what happened because that that is something that she's done in the past but I didn't give her that because I had to go and you know start that most hated task so anyway I saw how she was looking I saw the look on her face so obviously something did happen so I was like okay so yeah the woman told me she was like oh well I didn't know she was crying I'm gonna go and apologize to her so I told her I kept telling her she's right here I kept pointing up to where she was because we were on the ground floor at that time and so she was like i don't see her i was like stand right here she's right here and so she was like oh she's right there oh, okay i see her and i was like yeah i saw what she looked like and she did indeed cry so you know she was like i'm gonna apologize to her so later on she called me and she was like well i apologize to her i was like well, what did she say now keep in mind this was a older white woman who went and apologized to a 20 something year old um socially awkward white woman like she barely talks to anybody she she will have full-on conversations with like less than five of us in there and i'm one of the people so she said that she was sorry so i said i asked her i said well, what did she say to you in response she was like nothing really she walked off i was like okay that's what i expected from her because that's how she is she's so she's socially awkward like she don't want to talk to you like she's probably still processing in her mind what she did wrong for y'all to come at her like that so you know it is what it is so anyway now let me tell y'all the foolishness i'm gonna try to tell y'all within the next three and a half minutes so i can be done within the 30 minute time frame y'all it's the end of the day and so it's six o'clock and i i was breaking out the first person and so old boy came over there that i just told y'all about who has the two kids he done rolled up because I'd have read him because I was like, yeah, it had it been me, I would have stomped you out because I heard that he was the one who made her cry. So anyway, he didn't say that after I said that. So I was like, okay then, so you acting funny. I said, oh, I see you acting funny again. So he didn't say nothing. I was like, okay. So I got on my phone, started scrolling, looking up some stuff or whatever. And then all of a sudden I see somebody at the corner of my eye. It's him. He done rolled up. And so he was like, who over here? I was like, um, nobody really at the moment. Now, I lied because the other person was over there. She had just came and said something to me, and then she went over in the corner. What she does, she likes to read books. So she, she went over in a corner and kind of hid and was reading a book. <laughs> and so um, this man tried to heal me up, y'all. This man wrapped his arms around me and started squishing me like this from the side. So then he like put his weight on me, which ain't a lot because he's not a twig, but he ain't fat. Child, I'm like, what are you doing? And like what I was sitting on, it has, I was sitting on something that had a track under it. That's the best way I can describe it. And so there wasn't much on the track, only what I was sitting on and something behind that. And there was room for like maybe four more things to sit on the track tell me why this man gonna try to pick me up right like for real i was like no, i started screaming to the top of my lungs like you would have thought i was screaming bloody murder i was screaming to the top of my lungs that's why my voice kind of doing what it's doing now I, i'm like dang did it go out yet but yeah i started screaming to the top of my lungs i do not like for nobody to try to pick me up i am not here for being picked up you can miss me with all of that so that's what was going on. This fool was really trying to pick me up. I was like screaming. Like he, and I think he might have actually tried to be able to succeed if I would have let him. Like I can't, I, it, I can't do it. I don't like to be picked up by nobody. So he, he really trying to scoop me up. I was like, oh no. Then all of a sudden he going to push me on the track. And so I'm seeing how far back he's pushing me. And then my mind is, I'm finna be in the flow. Me and everything I'm sitting on finna be in the flow in a minute if he keep pushing me back any further. So he eventually stops. And so he was like, yeah, keep talking that stuff. I was like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? Like, I really was screaming. I was like, what is wrong with you? Why would you do this? So anyway, y'all, that wasn't even the end of it. This fool came up there to terrorize us. So he not only accosted me, he rolled up on the woman that was over there reading the book, took her shoe off. And came up to me, and I saw the shoe, and I knew it was hers. I don't see nobody in there with that same shoe on. 
Tell me why this fool went and took her shoe and put it up somewhere high so neither one of us could reach it. The woman is shorter than me. He tall. And I say, how dare you? You know we can't reach it unless we get something and knock it down. Child, he came in there and chose violence. But anyway, y'all, that's what happened today. I hope y'all have a good day and be safe out there. I'll see y'all later. Bye.